Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today's Lunch and Learn series is all about project planning. I'm Steve Mahoney. I'm here with Kathleen Thompson and Jag Dalal. Jag will be presenting today's topic. Uh, Jag, I will turn it over to you. Well, thank you very much. And uh, it, it's my pleasure to really talk about the project planning, something that I've done 35, 40 years of my work life, uh, managing it, looking at it. And trust me, if there is only one person with a headache, I can add my name to it, that yes, a lot of times I had a headache as well doing it. But at the end of the day, project planning is absolutely critical for all of us to understand and utilize. Uh, it, amazingly, that when we talk about project planning, people get to the idea of a business project planning. Well, all of us have done some sort of a project planning at all times. We've taken vacations, we've had parties, we've done things where we had to have a project plan in terms of setting up, establishing what different milestones are, what do we have to get to, what's a dependency, for example. You know, recently I booked up a vacation trip for me and I booked the hotel first and then found out that I couldn't get the flight. So that was a wrong way of kind of doing it to make sure that I did the right way. So my purpose today is really to go through what I'm gonna call basics of project planning. And the first part is really the importance of project planning. Then we're going to talk about understanding what's in a business uh, project plan and what are the components. We're going to talk briefly about the project planning process because it is a process. It's not an activity. It is a continuous process. Some challenges in managing project planning. And then I will be open to any questions and answers as you begin to post in the chat box. So with that is my agenda uh, through this roughly an hour or 45 minutes of the time I'm gonna spend with you. So thank you very much for attending this and in showing your showing your interest in really understanding and learning about project planning. And given that half the people have some experience, I think you'll find that, that uh, you'll be able to add to your experience with some stuff that I'm gonna talk about. So the very first part is the fact that the Project planning is essential. Let me see if I can move this out of the way. Okay, so project planning is essential because it sets up a level of discipline in the process. And that's one of the things that was in the question, that the project planning requires discipline. It is not something you're going to do and say, eh, maybe, maybe not. Do it sometimes, not do it sometimes, but it requires a discipline. It identifies the priority of the task and their order of completion. I just gave you the example that when I booked the hotel room, I was wrong in setting up the priority of the tasks. It sets up progress for evaluation and tracking of the achievement. Did, did, did I do this? Didn't I do this? Where was my problem? What should I do differently? So it reduces the risk of missing out on key activity in completing the business plan. I've had some mentoring uh, uh, sessions where I've asked the question that, okay, you started the business and you're going to do all of this. Have you signed up with the state department to get a text number? Oh, no, I didn't do that. But that's a key activity before you really launch your business plan. And a business planning process helps you through it. And finally, it helps communication with the stakeholders. And I think that the in one of the other sessions, I talked about the stakeholders. Each of the businesses have a lot of stakeholders. Stakeholders include those who are partnering with you, those who are your customers, those who are your providers, those who are providing funding for you, and those who are dependent on whatever you do. Those are all your stakeholders. They have an interest in where you are in your project, how far you are, and understanding the progress you're making. So I think a couple of quotes, I mean, Tom Landry's quote, the famous football coach, uh, you know, from Green Bay, uh, he had a great, setting a goal is not the main thing. It's deciding how you will go about achieving it and staying with that plan. That's all about project planning. Project planning is about deciding where you want to go and then staying with it so that you can track the progress and you can see where you're going to be headed out in the future. And if you are not getting there, if you go off rail, so to speak, you have an opportunity to take a look at your project plan, understand the dependency, and maybe redo it. So it is important. 
it is a roadmap, as uh, Arnold Tingle said, uh, and it is a really courage to press on to your destination. And we all do that when we take a travel or a trip. So project plan, it's key supporting process. It's not the process for business. It assures the outcome happens as you are planning it. So it is the process. In a business, you got several processes. You got a process that actually launches your business, that does the part of the business that you're doing. Then there are supporting processes like the financing, like the business planning. Project planning is one of those that assures it is a successful outcome. A project plan is a living document. And I like the word living document. It's not a document you're going to write it up and stick it in a drawer and say, I'm done with it. A living document is something that you're going to be constantly revisiting. It is something you're going to keep looking at it on a regular basis. A living document is something that is important to be kept current. And as you go forward, keep revising it as environment changes, as things change, as the outcomes change. So it becomes a living document so that at any point in time, you can pick it up, take a look at it, see where you are, see where you need to go, and what are issues in front of you. A typical project plan includes steps in the process. What are the activities? Time to complete each of these steps. So you got to define what kind of time period you're going to need. And some of this is going to be an estimate at some point in time. And at some point in time, you're going to find out that, wait a second, it's not, I'm, not, I'm not going to be able to complete it in the time I expected it to be. In which case, you have to go and revise your project plan. That's how it becomes a living document. Stay with the steps in the process. You may start an activity, and then all of a sudden you find out that, oh, I should have filed with the State Department to get a tax number. Well, he all of a sudden said, okay, I'm going to back up, revise my project plan, make it a living document, and complete it. Dependence on various steps. You can't go to the next step until the previous step is completed. So, for example, again, back to my example of taking a trip and dependence of the hotel room was really based on my flight, not the other way around. And the same with starting a business and filing with the State Department or with the local authority. That's a dependence before you can go forward. And it's important because a lot of times, some of us actually forget about that dependence. Some of us don't recognize there is a dependence involved until we get to that point and say, oh, shucks, I should have done this. Well, that's where the project plan comes in very handy and helps you with it. It helps you with the assignment of responsibility. If you have more than one person working with you, person would know what is expected of them, in what time frame, what is supposed to be the outcome, who is dependent on it. All of those are communication that you're going to have with your stakeholder in terms of responsibility, in terms of tracking progress, et cetera, so that you can communicate and you're staying current with where you are in, in that particular uh, journey. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to add in the chat box. I already told Kathleen that I'm open to accepting questions at any point in time. So if there are any questions, then I'll, I'll take it at any point in time. So please feel free because it's very important. It's a lunch and learn series. And I know that there will be times where I may say something and you're going to say, gee, I don't understand this, or I need some more information, need some clarification. Please feel free to ask that question. I'll be very happy to answer that at that point in time. Or if it's a very good question that really needs to be addressed in depth, I may even defer it till the later. So why project plan? It's a discipline. It is a bridge between the goals and accomplishment. Because goals is a vision. If you don't have a plan for the vision, it's a great quote that I have used before, that if you have a vision without a project plan, it's a dream. If you have a vision without a project plan, it's a dream. It's important that once you have a vision, you have a project plan. 
project plan brings that vision into existence. And so it allows you, the process helps you in setting up, accomplishing the goal you set up. Now, back to the comment I made earlier, the project plan is a process. The difference between a process and activity is activity starts and stops. There's nothing afterwards. A process is a continuous process. Process creates a living document because now you're, go you're going to be following all the way through. So if you're taking a vacation, booking a hotel room or booking a flight is an activity, not a process. Process is that of planning for the entire vacation from the time you thought about it to the time you finally come home. That's a whole process that you're kind of defining in it. It established logical steps in completing the task. Now, the steps are important, and I'm going to talk about a little bit later how you create that. And those are the steps you're going to need. But the important part, the important word here is logical. Does this make sense to have the step in the process? Sometimes we end up doing activity in our accomplishment, in our goal, which are not logical, may not be in the right order, may not even be needed. And it's important that if you have a project plan that allows you to ask that question, am I supposed to do this? And the answer is yes, then where does it fit? If I'm not supposed to do it, then it doesn't belong in a project plan. That's the logical part of it. Understand the dependency. Excuse me. I've been talking about the dependency that you have to understand that. The third is visualize and communicate progress. It's critical that at some point in time, you need to understand where you are. Are you ahead of schedule? Are you behind schedule? Are you on schedule? There are other stakeholders who are interested in where you are. Some of the mentoring uh, sessions that I've done, I have put in front of them template for project plan, which I'm going to share with you. And later on, Steve will send it to you as a template. I asked the people that I mentor, and I said, okay, here's a project plan template. Develop it. We're going to use that to communicate where you are in your progress. Because it's important that if in your progress you're stuck, as a mentor, I need to understand that and see that, how I can help you. It helps you visualize the progress. What percent complete are you? Because it's important to know that in order to accomplish your goal, you need to understand, are you partly done? You're somewhat done? You're not done at all. And that tracks the progress. And it assures that at the end of the day, you're completing the task. And that's one of the key things. And I'm going to talk about it later in terms of you need to understand for each of the tasks, what's the outcome? The next bullet is a structured and planned approach to problem solving. It's a structured approach. It is not a haphazard. It's not throw on the wall, see what sticks. It is a structured plan approach and it identifies what steps were missed. Maybe you went ahead and missed a step. If the step was necessary and there was a dependency on it, you're gonna re regret it later on. By having a living document of a project plan, You'll be able to see if you missed a step, to stop where you are, make sure that that step is in the right place and you have to complete it. Rework due to inconsistent order of approach. Often enough, we kind of get into a place where, oh, shucks, I should have done this first before doing what I'm doing now. In which case, I'm going to throw out what I'm doing now and go back and rework it. A project plan makes sure that you're not gonna be involved in too many rework activities. Trust me, you will have some rework because you're starting a business, you're growing a business, and all of the businesses have some missteps, some rework issues. So having a rework is not a bad thing completely, but too many rework says that your project plan is not done correctly, your project plan is not current, and your project plan is not a living document. And it really, it reduces the visualization of where you are that I already, already talked about. Let me stop for a second, just take a breath. 
And uh, Kathleen, are there any questions that anyone has asked that I should be answering at this point? There are no questions at present. Okay. Please feel free to make sure if you have any questions, put them out there. I'll be very happy to answer them. So what project plan? I already have talked about it in terms of the why we need to do that. So what does a project plan include? Well, first of all, it's a list of activities, but the more importantly, anticipated outcome. A lot of times you write the activities, but we, could, we don't define what the outcome should look like. It's the results. We always have to look for results. And by identifying what anticipated outcome from activity tells you what the end goal is. Often enough, we put the activities and then we sort of complete it. And then he said, gee, uh, did we accomplish what we thought we should be accomplishing? That's where the outcome comes in. Again, a living document. Sometimes you may get to a point where during the project planning process, you have identified an activity, you've identified an outcome. It may not be the right outcome that you anticipated or you wanted. In which case, you have to go back and revisit your project plan and say, did I do the activity identification correctly to get to the outcome I'm looking for? So it becomes, a, again, another part of living document. Outcome is how you measure progress. It's not, you know, when I used to manage an organization and I would say, okay, give me the status on X. And person says, I'm working on it. And I'm going to say, no, that is not the outcome. Outcome is going to tell me I'm 30% complete, I'm 50% complete against a measurable outcome. Each of the activities should have a measurable outcome, a defined outcome, so that you can say, I did it or I didn't do it. It's not kind of partly. Second is a duration estimate. How many hours or days each is going to take. Now, you're going to find out that you're going to start creating a project plan and you're going to have an estimate. You may be completely off on your estimate because you may be very uh, optimistic or you may be very pessimistic. And you may be defining that, oh, it may, it may take me days to get this. And you may get it done in one day. Or on the other hand, you say, oh, yeah, it'll, one day I'll get it done. And all of a sudden you find that it is a lot longer process and it's going to take a lot longer. It's critical that you, est you set up the estimate first because in the initial state, it's going to define the time frame it's going to take for you to complete the task. As a living document, you're going to find that every so often you're going to go and visit and said, did the outcome happen in the time frame that I expected? If the answer is no, is my outcome incorrect? Are my activities incorrect? Or is my estimate incorrect? You could have all three of them incorrect. Or one of the incorrect part drives the other two. So it's really critical to have activities, estimate, and outcome as sort of a three-legged stool. You can't have one of those three legs out of sync. If the estimate to be accurate, it must have all the activities identified and outcome. So keep that in mind that as you create a project plan, activities, outcome, and estimate is a part of a three-legged stool it will only be consistent and stable if all three are aligned with each other. Project planning is going to include the dependence between activities in what order you need to complete them so that at the end of the day, your activities and outcomes are dependent on activities and outcome that previously needed to have happened. What's the plan date for the start and what's the completion date? You're going to identify based on your estimate. Now, interestingly, people ask the question, okay, so I estimated that my one activity is going to take eight hours. And does that mean that my completion date is going to be the next day? Well, not really, because you're going to try and figure out how many hours a day or how many hours you're going to put in to completing that particular task. So that's another aspect that you have to kind of think about in estimating. When you estimate, you're going to estimate 
hours of activity, not the elapsed time. Now, elapsed time will come in as you plot it out that, okay, my eight hours is going to be over a period of one week. So when you lay out the project plan by in a calendar form, even though eight hours is what you're going to spend on it, it may take one week to complete those eight hours. And that kind of helps you identify the end goal when you're going to reach the outcome by date, as opposed to the hours and the days you're going to spend completing that particular set of activities. And that gives you the planned completion date. So now completion date is not the estimate period. Completion date is based on the time you're going to spend on it to try and get it done in that time interval. Who's going to be doing it? If it's just you, then it's just your name. Sometimes, don't forget, the responsible party could be not in your control. So, for example, when you're filing with the State Department to get your tax responsible party for completing the activity is somebody at the State Department. You may not have complete access or control over that person, but you can identify your first estimated date of completion or when that person thinks is going to be able to approve and grant you the tax code. You may have to go and revise it based on what happens in real life. So that is a lot that allows you to create the plan completion date versus the estimate because you estimated one hour of your time to fill out the form, send it to the state department, your activity is complete, your outcome of filling out the form is done, but the outcome you're looking for is getting the tax number. That determines what the completion date is going to be. Back to the game. All of these things are interrelated. And finally, status as of. I personally have always loved the RYG indicator, red, yellow, green. Let me tell you my, my definition of red, yellow, green. Green means that I am on track to complete the activity, which you have the anticipated outcome within the estimated hours by the completion date. All four are to be met at some point in time, you don't have any issues, that is a green. A yellow is all those four things are going to need some help. All four things are dependent on something, which is not completely under my control, but I think that I should be able to get it done. So yellow says, hey, I'm raising a little flag that there is enough chance that I may not be able to get it done. So for example, you're trying to do a project plan around, say, gardening, providing a gardening service. And you have identified the activities. You've given a quote. That's the estimate. You've given the end date. You've given the outcome of what the garden is going to look like to your customer. Well, yellow part comes in when all of a sudden it becomes heavy rain. It's not, not under your control. You may raise that as a yellow flag to your customer and say, by the way, I still think I'm going to be able to do this. I think I'm going to get the outcome as we signed up for. My estimate is still accurate. My completion date now is in jeopardy because of rain. I could not get the work done when I anticipated it or when I planned it. So you may have to revise a project plan based on that. That's a yellow indicator, which only says that Everything is okay, except there is a dependency that may make me miss something. And red says, oh, God, help me. Either my activity is incorrect, my dependency is incorrect, my outcome is the outcome. My estimate is incorrect, and maybe the completion date. Red says that I'm going to have to go and replan whatever I signed up for. That's where the red comes in. So I'm going to raise the flag and said, I'm not going to meet my objective. I'm not going to meet my estimate, or I'm not going to meet my outcome. I'm not meet my completion date. Red says, as soon as you hit the red, you have to replan. Yellow, you may have to replan based on what the yellow indicator is for. 
Red says you must replant. So a green plant is perfect. Yellow, you may have to replant, have to redo it. Red says, I got to replant, I got to redo it. So that was the project plan includes. Okay, some do's and don'ts. First of all, start by brainstorming activities. At this point in time, you can write down every activity you can think about. And that's important. The way the brainstorming works is you're not going to put it in any order. You're going you're gonna to literally, one of the best technique of doing brainstorming is get the little sticky notes. And I've done all kinds of sticky notes, stick it on a wall all over the place. That says I got to do all of these kind of things. That's a brainstorming of activities. Then take those activities and put them in chronological order, in the order based on dependence and based on the time frame and the estimate that you set up. Identify dependent activities so that when you put it in a chronological order, which is order based on time, you're going to say, wait a second. Uh, yeah, I set that up, but this activity is dependent on this activity in order to complete it in the time that I established in the chronological order. Chronological order is strictly time-based. Dependency is based on dependency and chronological. I like critical activities, especially those are gates. Gates are those that until you get the outcome that you expected at that gate, you can't go past. Good example, back to my filing with the State Department. You can't start a business if you're not filed as a legal entity. That's a gate. So it's a critical activity of, it may not be much of an activity. It may not be much of a, you know, time, but it is a critical activity and it is a gate that without you getting the approval from the state or the local uh, department for the business, you can't go past. Currently, I'm working with somebody uh, who is trying to do something. This is going to have an impact on getting an approval from FDA, Food and Drug Administration. And this is a conversation I had with that person. I said, don't go too far until you have gone past that gate. The gate is critical because if the, you don't get the certification or if you don't get the approval, you can't go forward. You don't have a business. And you have to rethink and you redo it. So a gate is a place where you can do a checkpoint. I'm good. I can go forward. I'm not good. Either I have to stay right here until it's done, or I'm going to go and rethink at this point in time. Fill out the template with the list you create and template I'm going to share with you. And revisit the list as you progress. Make it a living document. Learn more about the outcomes. A lesson learned. It's one of the critical activity that all of us tend to forget or ignore. And that is lesson learned. I get to a point and it didn't, my outcome didn't come through as I expected, or my estimate wasn't the right estimate, or my completion date wasn't the completion date I planned on. The lesson learned says that why did not that happen? That allows you to learn from whatever the reason was that that didn't happen. Well, rain stopped it. Well, that's out of your control, but it is a lesson learned that next time when I give a completion date, I'm going to put a little qualifier on it that my completion date is X if it doesn't rain for so many days. So lesson learned gives you the opportunity to improve your project plan and make sure that you don't make the same mistake twice or maybe three times. That's the lesson learned part. It's learning more from the outcome that, that you've already gone through. Don't. Do not rush into this. Take your time in listing the as many activities as you can think of. More activities you have, more dependence you're going to create, more activities you have, better estimates you're going to have in terms of the hour spent, in terms of the time spent, in terms of money spent. And so rushing into a, creating a project plan is going to come back to haunt and come back to hurt you. 
and apply judgment or activity or importance until you reach that part of the plan during execution. Don't say, oh yeah, it's not a problem. I'm gonna get it done. Uh, this is not important. In the future, yeah, it's not gonna be an issue. That's also going to create a future problem uh, for you. So these are critical do's and don'ts. And those of you who get a headache are gonna get a headache from doing too many of things that are in the don't part. That's where the headache starts. Headache starts because you missed something, you overestimated, you underestimated, you didn't plan it correctly. That gives you the headache that, oh, shucks, I'm here, and what am I going to do going forward? So here's a template. And as I said, Stephen will send you a, a, a template. So activity, output defines exactly what the output looks like. So output would be getting a state number, getting an identity, identifying the name. What's a start date? Are there any dependency activity that you can't do this until something else is done? What's a due date? What's a duration? Remember I said that duration and due dates are two different things. Eight hours is a duration. Due date could be two months out. And then finally, what the status is, red, yellow, green. That's a template that I sort of created, an easy template. There are lots of project planning software out there. Some of them are incredibly complex. Some of them are not important to really get started with the business that, that, that you've got. So given this, what would you use it? Well, I kind of did some brainstorming and say, hey, these are about some ideas on where are you going to need a project plan. Establish a business, I talked about it. Let's go to set up a website. You want to set up a website, you know, create a project plan just for creating a website. So the first thing is create a template for the message. What's your message? What is going to be your tagline? What is going to be your elevator speech? Engage a designer. Get a service designer to do it for you. Launch the website and then promote the website through social media. So only four simple activities that are identified. You can take each of those four and add a lot more to it. So to create a template for message, maybe a more activity than just a simple template. You may say, hey, I wanna be able to uh, have a, uh, identify me, my address, identify someone who can buy something. I'm gonna have something for references, my reviews. So you can take these four high level and drill it down as much as you can. So these are different kind of examples of creating a project plan. One key thing you're gonna notice here, what I did not do is create a one gigantic business plan, a project plan that has everything in it. Yeah, you can do that, but that's gonna become incredibly complex, big, long headache. Start with each part, lay out each part that's in a specific order. So right now what I've got is establish a business, first set, then a financial plan, then a marketing plan, then a website, and then initiate the business. It's sort of the activity in an order that you wanna think about so that you're creating a project plan, one depend on the other, so that it creates a bigger project plan without having to do a one complex large plan. So these are some examples. Give it a thought, use the template and start putting something together. So with that, what are the common mistakes? The biggest thing is not taking the time to develop a project plan. You gotta have a draft to start with. Don't worry about it. The accuracy is important at the end. Accuracy is not important at the beginning. It's important to get it started because you're going to learn, you're going to modify it, you're going to make it a living document. Being optimistic about activities. All of us are very much an optimist, especially if you're those of us who are starting a business. Uh, we're always optimists. Oh, I'm going to really be the millionaire by next year. We are optimists. That's in our nature. Be careful that if you're act we are optimists, you can be optimistic about your goal, about your vision, but not about the activities. 
make sure that your activities, you are very realistic in terms of how long it will take, who will do it, when it will be completed, and what's dependent on it. Personal expertise in completing the task. Sometimes you might not be able to. Creating a website. Yep, it is an activity. And you may find out that you don't have personal expertise, but you recognize that too late in your overall project plan. If you had done the right kind of work, you would have had identified early someone who's going to help you creating the, that website. Not tracking progress continuously. That's what I, I started by saying that, hey, don't create a project plan, stick it in a drawer, and say, I got it. You got to track the progress continuously. Take a look at it every day. Take a look at it every time you're completing a task. Every time you have come across a roadblock. Not sharing the progress of the stakeholders. Keep everybody in the loop. Keep everybody together with you. And then finally, ignoring red and yellow light and not establishing a recovery plan of activities. Now, it's absolutely critical. The red plan has to have a recovery plan. Yellow may or may not. But it's important for you to really recognize what are the red and what are the yellows in here. So at this point, let me just kind of stop and see, are there any questions, Kathleen? There are a few, but they're sort of contingent on what, how comprehensively you explain what their question is before they ask it. So they asked a question, but then they thought you might answer it later. So they didn't want to ask it until you finish, if that sure. makes sense. So. I, I will, let's take a minute and form your questions and throw it out there. Okay, so the first question was related to your preferred type of document for documenting the project plan. And you listed, you showed your template. <clears throat> but they yes. actually wanted to know about also not only the tasks and when they were going to be done, but also who was going to be assigned to each step. So do you have a slightly more detailed version of the template than the one that you gave us? So right there, there is a, it's very easy, add another column called who's responsible for it. That's why I created this simple Excel bit spreadsheet so you can keep adding a column based on your particular need. Since that question been asked, I will modify the template and add that as to who's responsible for that particular activity. And then another related question from the same person was more visual. Like you have start date and due date. Do you think it's helpful to, for example, show weeks across in columns across so you can see it spanning those weeks so that you can visually see where you're at or is that not particularly helpful? Well, it, it, is, it is helpful to some respect. The reason I've got a start date and a due date as columns here, you can then take all the start dates and due dates and lay it out separately. The problem I always find that if you just only do a calendar-based start date, due date and draw a line, you miss out on the other important aspects, which are the output and which are the duration. That's the reason I've got it this way. And then, and, and then that's where you need to then create a separate little visual, a sort of a calendar based that can show you activity over a period of time. Two different <clears throat> visualization. This is a tool for the project planning. The other is a visual tool for communication. Absolutely important, good question. It's important, but understand that it is more visual rather than providing the depth of the information you need to have in a project plan. Thank you. Um, another question is, there are many bits and pieces of activities that I have to do to achieve my target. I find it hard to prioritize. And that, that is absolutely common. And that's the reason I said make it a living document. 
don't get too con too concerned about having the first project plan to be the accurate one. Because lots, as you said, a lot of activities are out there. Draw one, you get to a point and you're gonna say, wait a second, I forgot this dependency. Or wait a second, this was a gate I didn't think about. Revise the plan at that point in time. Don't be afraid of recreating the project plan as you go forward. If you say, hey, I created a project plan and I can't live up to it, which means I'm all bad, that's not true. I don't know of anyone that has ever created a project plan that is 100% accurate on day one. Another question is, what do you mean by after the activity, which is in your template? Dependency. So let's just take the this template. 1.2, 1.1 says, you know, get the state department approval. 1.2 says establish a website. Well, on 1.2, after activity will be 1.1. If you don't have the approval of 1.1, which is getting a state or any approval, you can't go to step 1.2. I hope so that makes it clear. Yeah, so if something isn't a dependency, it wouldn't have anything in there. That is correct. Right. Okay. Um, last question that we have thus far is how granular should the plan tasks be? Should we start with a high level category and then have all the small tasks under it? The person who asked the question had the answer. Start any level of accuracy, any level of detail that you can put together. As I said, don't get too crazy that, gee, I don't have 100 activities. You may not. You may have started with 10. And as you start doing the first activities, you identify five more. That's what makes it a living document. That's what makes it the project plan keeps getting better and better as you go progress, as you go forward. It's not, it's, if you start by saying, I'm going to have to have a huge project plan to start with before I do anything, you're going to be hung up. You're going to be absolutely stuck there and not accomplish the goal you set for your vision. All right, that's it so far. Great. Well, again, to summarize it, project planning is not as difficult as the words sound. It is something that you're gonna lay it out. It's you're gonna work with it. You're gonna keep improving it. And it's going to help you guide to get to your end result as you expect it. But the other side is, if you don't have a project plan, you're gonna have a lot of hiccups. You're gonna have a lot of, oh shucks, I should have. Or you're gonna have a lot of steps saying, oh, I couldn't do this because all of those negative thoughts only occur when the project plan is not complete, is not detailed enough, and is not laid out that's guiding your actions. Last but not the least, it's critical to keep track of red, yellow, green, so that is, it helps communicate with others, and it helps you kind of keep track of where you are in, in your progress. Starting a business is a tough thing as is. I totally accept it. I totally appreciate it. Project plan is strictly something that helps you smooth it a little bit. You still have the hard work to do, but at least now, you can take a look at it and say, oh, I already did this. Make you feel better. So hopefully this gives you some background, some idea, and hopefully that one person with a headache says, ah, okay, I'm, I'm all ready to go now. Thanks, Jag. We are going to have more time for Q&A if you'd like to post more questions. Um, but before we do, before we answer any more questions, there are a couple of things we want you to know. What do you do after this workshop? You'll get an email with a link to the replay. You can study the replay and you can borrow the techniques as you wish. You can come to the next workshop on getting the important stuff done. Because planning's great, and we talked about it Monday, we talked about it today, and it's really important, 
and means nothing if you don't take action. So you'll learn how to prioritize, schedule the work, even gamify your work and overcome the resistance that we all feel when it's our own business. You can practice what you learned and even do it with a buddy and hold each other accountable. The resources that Jag mentioned are his template, which are included in the handouts you will get today, which as he said, you can edit as you see fit. And a question that I have for you, Jag, is are there any good, free, simple online tools that you would also recommend if somebody wants something a bit more complex? Uh, I didn't do my homework. But I will take that on as to do, and I will send it off to Stephen, uh, some project planning. The only project planning software I know are all more complex than what you need to have as a startup business. But I'll see if I can find something that's a very simple, basic, includes the kind of things that I talk about. Thank you. Um, one resource that you have available to you at all times is a SCORE mentor. And if you have a SCORE mentor, that's great. And if you don't, and you would like one, we're going to launch a poll right now to ask you, are you currently working with a SCORE mentor? And if you're not, would you like to work one with one? You are under no obligation. It's totally up to you. If you answer the question, yes, we will send you an email today to let you know how you can find a SCORE mentor. If you answer no, you'll get no further communication except for whatever emails you normally get from us and the email with the replay. And as I said, what's next right now is we have more time for Q&A if you'd like to ask more questions. We'll go through what's already there and then there's plenty of time to post if you want. And don't forget, if you wanna talk in more detail, you can ask to speak. And if you have a confidential question that relates to your specific business, we can save it until the recording has been turned off. We have one comment so far, as opposed to a question that says, I'm putting the bottle of Advil down and we'll rewatch this. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for Jag? All right, well, thank you so much for coming. We are going to turn off the recording in just a minute, but before we do, the three of us, Steve, Jag, myself, wanna thank you so much for participating in today's workshop. We will send you a link to the recording of this session. It's hosted on our YouTube channel at Greater Hartford Score. There are other helpful videos on that channel. And there's a whole playlist of all the lunch and learns we have done thus far, which is know your numbers, marketing, and business tools. So to find those, go to that playlist and you can find them all in the same place. And if you not only subscribe to our YouTube channel, but click the bell to get notified, you will find out when new workshops are added to the channel. We're gonna stop the recording now and thank you very much for attending.